Welcome to our 1000 PS YouTube channel. My name is Chris and I'm here in Almeria in the south of Spain for the press presentation of the new Suzuki V-Strom 1000 ABS 2014. This of course isn't the new model, fortunately I think. This is not how motorcycles are supposed to look in 2014. It's just out of style, it's too bulky, it's a little bit stale. So I can tell you the new model is much more dynamic considering design and performance. Suzuki stopped selling the old V-Strom 1000 in Europe in 2007. And besides really ugly side cases, it had a V2 engine with 996 cc, a maximum power output of 98 horsepower and 101 newton meters of torque at 6,400 revs. So here it is, the new Suzuki V-Strom 1000 ABS 2014. After six years and in a class with high-performance bikes like a KTM Adventure or a Ducati Multistrada with 150 horsepower, you might expect the new V-Strom to have 125, maybe 130 horsepower. But it only has 100. Uh, as we all know, torque is much more important with these bikes, so they have 103 newton meters now instead of 101. What a technical evolution. 30 years ago, 100 horsepower were quite the number. But I can tell you this isn't the whole truth, because 103 newton meters of torque are reached not at 6,400 revs like in the old model, but at 4,000 revs, which is, which is really low and um, makes the bike so rideable. The biggest plus on this, I would say, is that it's so easy to ride um, and the comfort is, uh, I think, at the best in the whole class. 100 horsepower isn't much, but it's enough. This doesn't want to be a performance bike like a KTM Adventure or a Ducati Multistrada. It wants to be what it's supposed to be, an adventure tourer that everybody can ride. So this is all about rideability. That's why we have an ABS, and that's why we have even a traction control. And I can show you right now how you set the traction control. Suzuki always has nice instruments. I have here an analog tachometer, and uh, right next to it there are the most important informations like speed and gear position. And below that there's a second LCD um, window where I have all the other informations like fuel consumption and fuel level and uh, outside temperature and also the traction control. Um, since I can only change and select the traction control uh, when I push this SEL button which stands for select, I select the traction control. Um, then on the LCD display appears uh, a black frame around TC and then I can select the mode. I can shut it off completely. Unfortunately, I can't shut off the ABS. Um, but I can shut off the traction control and then I have mode 1 and mode 2. Mode 1 allows a little wheel spin. For me it was um, the perfect mode since we had uh, about 5 degrees up in the mountains and uh, the tarmac wasn't in best shape. So. This was really helpful for me without uh, irritating me or distracting me. Uh, the second mode um, is distracting, I think, because if the surface isn't perfect and the grip level isn't perfect, the TC light here on, um, on the display is always on, it's always blinking. So that annoyed me and then I either shut off the traction control or used the um, the one mode. A lot of 
original accessories are available for this bike too. My favorites are the LED fog lamps mounted on the accessory bar. Um, handle covers, always useful. And then we have some more accessories like um, the grip heaters, a high seat, a low seat, engine under cowling, tank bags in two different sizes, a chain guard, a center stand, or the small LED turn signal lamps. And if you want to go far, you got to take something with you. So you might need the three-part luggage system. There's a 29-liter box on the left and a 26 liter on the right because there's just one exhaust pipe and the top case can hold 35 liters. All the boxes are attached and removed really easy just with uh, basically one hand so you can take a uh, carry them into the hotel room. So what impressed me the most riding the new Suzuki V-Strom 1000 ABS? Well First of all, it's um, that it's so easy to ride for anyone. This bike really gives you confidence. And the second thing is the high level of comfort, which is, in my opinion, the best in this class. Because I'm someone who likes to go fast, but not far. So the 350 kilometers we rode yesterday was a lot for me. And usually I'm in pain after that. But yesterday I got off the bike and told my guide I could ride this tour again. Um, my knees didn't hurt, my ass didn't hurt, my back didn't hurt. I was just relaxed, almost like riding in a car. And I didn't change anything on the bike. <coughs> I didn't change the seat, there's a low seat or a high seat. I didn't change the angle of the windshield. You can do that just by pushing on it. It's really easy. And uh, it was also in the lowest position. You have three positions for the windshield. Um, everything is, seems like made for me, or even at least for my height. I'm uh, 180, so I guess they had a model there which was just my size. Um, and the third thing is the stability at high velocity, because we were going really fast yesterday sometimes. Uh, at the end we had some highway rage up to 200 kilometers per hour and it was just so stable and so cool. It was almost spooky. So as I mentioned before, this doesn't want to be a performance bike. This doesn't want to compete with KTM or Ducati. It wants to be an adventure tourer and I think Suzuki thought a lot about what customers need and what they want from a bike like this and you should definitely give it a try and ride one of these so let us know what you think about this bike about our video subscribe to our channel youtube.com slash 1000 ps and check out our facebook fan page facebook.com slash 1000 ps see you next time